After living on our sailboat for seven months in San Diego, our family left January 26, 2015, bound for Mexico. I'm Jessica. I was 11 years old and in sixth grade when we left San Diego. I love living on a boat and being able to always be on an adventure. I'm a nervous kid. I get pretty anxious around the boat. Sometimes I think we're going to flip over. I hate it when terrapins heal. The scariest time for me was when we were headed to Haltuco. I thought we might have died. Thankfully, Dad turned around the boat. My parents say I need more time to trust terrapins. My name is Emma. I was nine years old and in fourth grade when we left San Diego. I really like living on a boat, even though I sometimes feel a little icky. I love always being on a venture. I can't think of a time when I was scared on the boat. I almost never get scared. Sometimes I'm the calmest person on the boat. Our family decided to sell our house and all of our belongings to set sail. Growing up, Emma and I never got to see our parents much. Yeah, Mom and Dad were always at work and we had to hang out with nannies. We begged Mom and Dad for more time with them. It's nice that we are always together now on an adventure. One of my favorite memories was the time we spent Thanksgiving in Zihuatanejo when we got to release the baby turtles. Oh yeah, that was one of my favorites too. We each got a set free baby turtle. I love having family time 24-7. They're like, We're always learning too. Did you know that only one in a thousand baby turtles will make it to adulthood? That's really sad. For homeschool, Emma and I have our own drawers. For in this deck, we have our history, science, math, and language arts. We do. Our, our parents encourage us to do uh, famous literature. We do a lot. Of, I do a lot of writing. Emma does too. And um, we usually have books on the Kindle, but once in a while we will read um, hardbound books. We do PE and art. Also, sometimes VAPA. And VAPA is a. Uh, visual performing arts. It's where you do music and acting and uh, plays and things. So that's pretty fun for homeschool. This is how we do school. My mom gives us assignments and the due date. It's usually two weeks. It's up to us to get it done by the due date. It works well because if all I want to do is math for the rest of the day I can and if all I want to do for the rest of the day is history I can but at least it has to get done by the due date both our parents are my teacher our teachers um, my dad does science and my mom does the other subjects this is our hard drive the hard drive contains 90% of our school material. We transfer the school material from our hard drive to our Kindles. It's easier than keeping a bunch of textbooks because um, not a lot of boats have storage, so all you need is just one Kindle to hold all your things. Even off the boat, we're always learning. Like the time we went to see the pyramids near Mexico City after learning all about them. It's great to learn about history, then go see it for yourself. I loved being able to see a real life shock mall. We've learned so much about Mexico's history and culture. Because of this adventure, we have learned to speak Spanish. I know enough Spanish to speak to local kids we meet. I would never have these awesome experiences had we not set sail. When we 
we flew to Guatemala, we stayed with the host family to get a real feel for the culture. We stayed overnight on a volcano. It was really cold. I loved seeing Guatemala in person after learning all about its people. On the boat, we've learned a lot. We know all about the instruments and how to read them. We have learned about all the different sails and when to use them. Yeah, like the time we showed Mom and Dad how to use a spinnaker. Right? Without us, they'd be lost. We've learned how to work as a team. Sailing requires a lot of teamwork. Em and I often have contests to see who can roll in the gym fastest. I always win. No, you don't. Pretty sure you're wrong. Let's just agree to disagree. Now it's time for my favorite part, fishing. We've learned all about fishing. We know which lures and lines to use for trolling. We've also learned how to fish with a reel and a rod. I learned how to humanely kill a fish by pouring rubbing alcohol into its gills. Dad's also taught us how to fillet a fish. Sometimes it turns into a science experiment. We have a lesson of our own we'd like to share with other boat kids. It's a great way to attract fish while snorkeling. Here's a cool way to attract fish while snorkeling. Step one, make sure you have a plastic bottle with a sturdy lid. Step two, crackers, tostadas, bread, or um, tortillas will work. You just make them into fine bits. Stick them in your bottle about one third full. After that, you can fill it up with fresh water, but we usually use salt water and fill it up about at the very top. And then once you go snorkeling, make sure to bring it. And then all you have to do is squish the bottle with the cap open, and then the, the bits come out, and you've got food for the fish. And just like that, you'll have fish coming to eat right out of your hands. It's a great way to get rid of stale bread, too. We How about the pirate kid? No, just shake it. Some people have the idea that being a boat kid means we're lonely. Not. Not. We've made friends with kids from all over the world. Some of our friends are only two years old. Most kids our age, and some of our friends are older than we are. Boat families love to hang out together. There's almost always other kids for us to hang out with. We have lots of boat slumber parties. In the cruise, we had a huge boat kit slumber party right on the beach. There's so many boat kids in the cruise. We even have our own morning net. I was pretty excited to be announced last year's first net controller for the season. Good morning, this is the Banders Bay Kids Net for Thursday, January 7th. The net con your, your net control today is Jessica from Desv Terrapin. Make sure you are on high power for the duration of the net. Please call in with your boat name and wait to be recognized. Let's start with check-ins around the bay. Thank you. Okay. Two. Shiny wind. And he kept saying, listen, listen. listen. The hardest part of being a boat kid is having to say goodbye to our friends, especially when most of our friends set sail across the Pacific. Actually, we've learned to say see you later instead of goodbye. Really no such thing as a typical day on the boat. We usually start school at 9 and are finished by, with school and lunch by 1. Then it's time to play, play, play. Sometimes we have sailing. We got us with friends in our walker bays. I love fishing so much I sometimes get up with the sun to fish before school starts. Almost every day we snuggle. We all love to be in the water. Mom and Dad love 
to hike. Sometimes it feels like we're always hiking. Yeah, so much for a group vote. One of my favorite times is when we swam with the sea lions. That was awesome. In the cruise, we spent some time with the local orphanage children at Christmas time. Some days we get out of school, especially when it's really hot and mom and dad want to have some boat shenanigans. Yeah, they call it a principal's holiday. One day we got to tour our Sea Shepherd boat. It was awesome. Dad taught me how to spear fish, and now he and I go out together to catch dinner. What I love most about living on a boat is always knowing what phase the moon is. We often celebrate a full moon with a beach party. Oh. Yeah, babe. Forget about the kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, you asked me to make you one. Thanks, babe. I might be a little um, fruity. <laughs> ooh, a s'more. Mmm. Living on a boat can be hard work. Something as simple as getting groceries is a tough task. We hop in our car, which for us is a dinghy. Once we tie up to the dinghy dock, we grab our bags and head to the store. We take different buses to the store. Most aren't air conditioned. After we buy our groceries and get rid of the excess packaging, Mom and Dad load up our heavy bags. Then it's back onto another bus. We all help to haul the food back to the dinghy. Then we pack up the dinghy with everything and try to leave a spot for all of us to sit. Hoping not to get everything wet, we head back to the boat and put everything away. This usually takes four hours. On the rare occasion that it rains, we have to scrub the decks. Something about earning our keep? When Dad needs a helper for boat projects and type places, he asks me to. Got it? Yep. After using the kayaks, Dad asks me to help lift them out of the water and put them on the side of the boat. It's a tough job. They weigh a lot. We get a lot of exercise helping out all the time. We are so fortunate to be boat kids. Yeah, I'm so happy our family chose this lifestyle. If you're going to be in Mexico at the beginning of 2017, let's meet up. Yeah, we'd love to meet more boat kids. You can always find us on our blog at sailingwithterrapin.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you for watching! And then smash them up like this. And then, once you smash up the crackers, try not to make a mess, um, put them in the bottle. And then, this is making a huge mess. We should. <laughs> Why don't you open the cap? Oh, a good idea! <laughs> oh Got it. Mom! Oh, let's see. Open the cap. What happens then after you. <laughs> what happens after you put the crackers? And how many crackers should I put, Jess? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wonderful, that's nice. Um, <laughs>